Hi, it's DeWire, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is January 18th, 2023. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, a while back at Cruiserweight, there was a fight between Lawrence Acoli and Christoph Glowacki. Right now, in that fight, I questioned Okoli before the fight. Right, I made arguments that Okoli had fought next to no one and that Glowacki had fought, really, the top of the division. Understand, going into that fight, Glowacki's only losses were to Alexander Usyk, who now has some of the belts at heavyweight, and to Maris Breedis. Well, Okoli proved me wrong. Right? He had a powerful jab, the best power jab in the division. Right? Think Virgil Ortiz. There are very few guys in the entire sport who have that level of power jab. And I was convinced Glowacki would be able to dodge the jab, get inside. I wanted to see what Okoli had. But that jab was so dominant, and Akoli, who's 6'5", knew how to use it. So he was able to keep Glowacki at the end of a jab, dominate the fight, and then stop him. Right after the fight, Akoli apparently was one of the few hundred people who saw my video. Right, keep in mind, I was, I was shocked, because here on YouTube, there are people with thousands of subscribers. I view my shop as a niche shop. Apparently, a colleague came across the video, didn't appreciate it in the slightest, let me know in his post-fight comments, right? For the video of a Coley's response, it's posted at gamblersadvisory.com, where it'll stay posted. By the way, I have no problem whatsoever with boxers calling me out and telling me when I'm wrong. All I ask is that if I'm right on their fights, well, how about calling me out and talking about what went wrong? But something remarkable happened after that fight. You, the fans, commented on the fight and said, Dwyer, if you think a Coley is good, you need to look at Richard Riakpo, right? I know I'm butchering names. He calls himself the Midnight Train. He's also 6'5". He's also British, right? Many of you thought that Riakpo, Riakpo, uh, was at least as good as Okoli. And, of course, he is unbeaten, his next fight, which is coming up this week and is against Christoph Glowacki, who is going off at a better than 7-1 to one underdog. Right? Understand, Glowacki, as I make this video, has only lost to the two guys I mentioned earlier, Usyk and Breedis, and now, of course, Okoli. So I looked at film of Richard Riakpo, Riakpo, okay? And guy looks tall, looks like an athlete, has a heavy punch. I notice he likes to fight southpaws. Glowacki is a southpaw, as was Juma, as was Fabio Turchi, Riakpo's last two fights. Right? He loves southpaws. He has power in both hands. He drops Turchi off a right-hand body shot. Excuse me. It's a left-hand body shot, as I see it here in my head. He drops Juma off of a right-hand body shot on the second knockdown in the fight. In other words, this is a 6-5 guy who is willing to go to the body 
and he has such power that one shot can end the fight, right? I give him credit. He's a puncher. But, and we have to make hard decisions here online. React Pour, in my opinion, is not a Kohli. He doesn't have that signature jab to keep you outside. He can't hold his ground while someone's trying to crash the pocket. He has to back up. And he's out of an orthodox stance. His left jab isn't that powerful. So the dynamic is completely different than it is with Okole. Okole can fight a world-class opponent like Glowaki, right? Who's in his mid-30s? Understand, there's an age dynamic here. Of course, Riakpur is 33 himself, right? Glowaki is something like 36 years old. But just to understand, Okole, who's younger than both of them by about three years, Okole can fight a world-class guy, and there's one question in the fight. Can the opponent get past his jab? And understand, Okole doesn't have to throw anything else. When you have that level of jab, don't get me wrong, he has other punches just like at welterweight Virgil Ortiz has other punches. But when you have this Carlos Monzon level power jab, and Okole can then be cautious while being offensive. When you're 6'5", and you can literally bust up the other guy, right? That, that jab might as well be a straight right hand. It's a power punch. When you're able to bust up the other guy without having to be deep in the pocket, in my opinion, that's a vastly different experience than having to go on your back foot, look for openings, and to try to counter a guy who's aggressively chasing you around the ring. Now, that's the, dyna that's the dynamic in Midnight Trains fights. Again, Richard Riakpour, right? That's the dynamic in his fights. He's on his back foot. He can't keep you off with his left jab. It's not stiff. It's a placeholder jab. Very different than a Okole. Right? So what he's trying to do is to have you get sloppy so he can counter you with a very heavy punch. Right, folks? That's high risk. He's in the deep end of the water here now. Right? Glowacki's a guy who leans back, right, is going to dare you to crash the pocket. Now, Okoli was able to hit Glowacki as he leaned back. I'm not sure what Reactpor is going to do. We might find out that 6 5 midnight train. Right, 6'5", might not be able to exploit a guy who's leaning back in the pocket. Then if Glowacki decides to go on his front foot, if he knows that Midnight Train is going to try to hit him to the body, I think that catches opponents off guard because you're fighting a 6'5 guy, you think he's a headhunter. If Glowacki tries to come forward, and knows that Reactpor's real game is counter body shots, right? He can throw the right hand to the head too, but he's really trying to hit you to the body, right? If Glowacki knows too that Reactpor's real game is to convince a southpaw to throw his dominant left hand then to lean back on it, 
then lean forward with a counter and hit the guy while he's extended. I'm just telling you at the top end of the game, a southpaw like Glowacki is going to faint. Might faint Reactpour out of his shoes. If Reactpour throws punches that Glowacki is prepared to block and he's not bad defensively, then Glowacki is going to have a lot to counter. So, I thought the line in the Okoli fight was ridiculous, and okay, Okoli won that fight. Right? Because I believe my thesis is still correct that Glowacki is an elite fighter who can overcome a height disadvantage. I like Glowacki here. He's a greater than 7 to 1 underdog, folks. Understand the risk involved. Greater than 7 to 1 underdog. He's fighting an unbeaten fighter with a lot of hype behind him. Right? But I don't expect Reactpour to actually be able to come in and control the pocket like Okoli did. I think they're different fighters. I think Okoli is much more aggressive than Reactpour. I think Reactpour is really a counterpuncher, a back foot fighter who's benefiting off his power and his reach. I believe that if a Glowacki gets him on his back foot, if Glowacki can crash the pocket, he might end up looking like Mike Tyson looked against Frank Bruno. In other words, tall guy, if you crash the pocket, fight low and get inside on him and he's unable to extend his arms, you could cause major damage. So for me, this line is a travesty. I like the underdog. I'll take the greater than 7 to 1 odds. Right? Glowacki is an elite cruiserweight. Mid-30s at cruiser, that's not too old. He's only lost to elites. And yes, I've learned the hard way that Lawrence Okoli is elite at cruiser. I believe Okoli with that jab can take it to heavyweight. Right? React poor doesn't have that power jab skill. He's just relying on countering ability and punching power. To me, that's far riskier than having a jab that's going to win you the slow rounds while your opponent is trying to figure out how to get past it. Right? A power jab that you can layer on. In other words, the guy can't get past your jab. You know where he is. You start coming in with straight right hands. You start coming in with hooks. You start building your attack a layer at a time. React poor doesn't have that. So. I'm taking the underdog. I'll hedge the play with Midnight Train by stoppage. Right? Understand if Reactpour doesn't get the stoppage, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. If a boxing match breaks out, I want to be on the side of the guy who has fought at championship level who has fought the vastly superior opposition. I'm going with Glowacki in this fight. I'll hedge the play with Reactpour by stoppage. But I need for everyone here to understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance, and if Reactpour wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you 
in a fight between a Kohli and Reactpor, I would take a Kohli because I would expect both 6-5, I would expect the Kohli to come out, establish a jab from distance. I would expect the Kohli to win the rounds where the guys are far away from each other. Now understand a Mike Tyson, that style where the guy's bobbing and weaving, Joe Fraser, that style where the guy's bobbing and weaving, jumping inside, throwing heavy punches, right? That style can neutralize a jab. An aggressive fighter who's committed to getting past the jab, getting in the pocket, letting his hands go, right? Forcing an Ali or a Frank Bruno to try to grab him. That guy would give a Coley problems. I believe that today. Right? What we're overlooking with Reactpor is that he's not that guy. He doesn't have the short punches or the desire, quite frankly, to crash the pocket and let his hands go. He strikes me as more of a counterpuncher. Right? He's not an Andy Ruiz who gets in the pocket and is a combination puncher. That's not this guy. Different fighter than Akoli. I would pick Akoli over him. If you're going to give me 7-1, to one, I'm going to take Glowacki over him. I'll hedge the play with Midnight Train by KO, which would give me substantially better odds than just taking Reactpour to win. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Understand the risk involved. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.